Calling all crows. I'm with Field Sports Nation member John Reed, decoying on his permission in Cornwall. This one's got a fan tail, so something is not right about these birds. Salami, I like them. Arabic joke there. We have a sausage stuffer on offer. Become a member of the Field Sports Nation and you could be pumping out black puddings like there's no tomorrow. Clay shooting perfection. Fitas world champion Sam Green offers his tips on how to make you shoot straighter. It's finding whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong really in it. And is Boris off his chump? The Queen's speech covered animal sentience and banning antler buttons, say newspapers. We get reaction. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We're almost as far west as you can go in Cornwall. Field Sports Nation member John Reed is keeping corvids off new drillings. So we're just on the lizard side of Helston and we're shooting crows on spring barley uh, for a farmer that has been experiencing some pretty serious issues with several hundred birds on the ground for the last week or so. Uh, he's tried bangers, and flags to no avail. So I've had the phone call to come out and see if we can keep them off for a day or two. I, I shoot pigeons through uh, the late part of the summer, but not particularly successfully. I'll do several 30-day bags, um, but nothing much more than that. Uh, but crows, crows, I will shoot maybe seven or eight hundred plus days over the course of the, the spring and early summer. And again, um, we'll hit them again then in sort of October when the maize is cut. Last year, I think I did 1160 crows I think uh, in those two sessions in those two couple of month sessions so yeah plenty of crows in Cornwall. There's nothing fancy about this decoy pattern no flappers and to start with no dead birds it seems to work even attracting buzzards. John helps to bring the crows jackdaws and rooks close by using two different crow calls. So this is the Nordic barborn um, this is the basic crow I think they do three or four models um, and the other choice is uh, the Primos power crow. So they both give a different sound, um, but I use more than one just to ring the changes. Um, one is um, a higher pitch than the other. So that was the Nordic, which is a deeper sound. And then the Primos, is the higher pitch. Generally, if a crow is passing and not taking a lot of interest in the, in the pattern, then there's a good chance that one of these two um, will bring it in. I generally prefer the Nordic because I just prefer the tone of the, the call. Um, they work 50% of the time. Lunch yeah. arrives thanks to the What Three Words app. John's wife, Nicola, brings two <laughs> Cornish pasties, of course. Right. It's going very well. I think we're, we're into 20 birds, I think. That's my dog. dog my dog? The dog's performing very oh, well. Yeah. Doc's just working hard. She's, she's pulled some long birds in, Charlie, hasn't she? Very well, yeah. Have you got a drink? Well? Yeah, we've got tea and squash. So, so we're good. But no, we're having a good day. After lunch, the shooting quietens down. John reckons there's something wrong with the pattern, so goes to check. We, we've had a half a dozen birds that have come in and are being put off by the pattern. That's only happened since I've put these dead birds out. This one's got a fan tail. So something is not right about these birds and it's putting the birds off. With the wind being so strong, in the, they're just turning straight off and gone. So we'll give it a try with these birds back in. The shooting picks up.
finally it's time to pack up and John is happy with the bag. Yep. We had a good day. Uh, the farm will be very happy to see a few less. It was quieter than I expected. There's, there's been more crows here over the last few days. A typical day would maybe be 50, 50 plus, 50 or 60. Um, as long as I'm watching the fields and the conditions are right. You know, several times a year, but plus four, we'll do over 100. I mean, it was very windy through the early half, part of the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the crows to cartridges uh, ratio went a bit pear-shaped, to be fair. <laughs> the wind has made the shooting interesting and getting the decoy down from the tree even more difficult. Yes, 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 yes. We got him. There we go. I've taken a lot longer in the past to do that. Well done, John. And if you are a Field Sports Nation member with a story to tell, drop me a line and I will see about coming to film you too. Thank you, John, for a lovely day. Now, before we unleash David, you may remember last week we ran the story on the Dover anglers being kicked off the pier. Well, the story was picked up by ITV and once again, we are getting our stuff in the mainstream media, which we know makes the powers that be wince that little bit more. And it's you, the Field Sports Nation members, people like John, who give us the means to push the agenda beyond Field Sports Britain. Right, from freedom to free bus pass, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The government in England has reissued plans to ban hunting trophy imports and to halt most live animal exports. The Queen's speech, which opens the new session of Parliament, says there will be new animal welfare laws. And Charlie has a reaction to that in our news feature this week. The differences between stately homeowners and the people that own the land around them was laid bare this week. Two Dutch stalking guests on land around Rest Park in Bedfordshire took photos of themselves with the muntjac they'd shot. In the background is the pavilion designed by 18th century Baroque architect Thomas Archer. English Heritage, which owns Rest Park House and Gardens but has nothing to do with the estate, says it condemns the stalkers. The RSPB and its supporters are lashing out at gamekeepers after two birds of prey were found poisoned. The RSPB blames gamekeepers for a golden eagle it says was killed on the Invercold estate in Aberdeenshire. It found the carcass in March, then waited a month to give it to police. At the RSPB's insistence, police search properties on the estate but made no arrests and say that inquiries are ongoing. Thanks to Cameron Black for the story. Meanwhile, a poisoned pigeon used as bait killed at least one pair of peregrines nesting at Clay Hill in Shropshire. Natural England is backing the reintroduction of white-tailed eagles to the east of England. Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation and Wild Ken Hill, a greening farming project in Norfolk, will release up to 60 juvenile white-tailed eagles over 10 years in West Norfolk. The species went extinct in the early 20th century, but Roy Dennis has reintroduced them to Scotland and the Isle of Wight. The reintroduction has been slammed by farmers as the birds have been known to pick off lambs. The Isle of Wight birds have been spotted as far north as County Durham and as far west as Somerset. An animal rights activist is being accused of repurposing her photographs in order to try and prove her point. Nada Fahoud, a writer on the Daily Mirror who won an award for her anti-hunting articles, tweeted the same picture of a hare to highlight first a Mewburn and then snaring. Northern Irish politician John Blair, who wants to ban hunting with dogs in the province, has tried to explain his reasons why to the hunting press. Irish Country Sports and Country Life magazine carries an interview with Blair in which he defends his use of a League Against Cruel Sports survey which was mainly filled in by people who don't live in Northern Ireland. He claims it shows his private member's bill is popular and dodges or fails to answer questions ranging from pest control to what will happen to the hounds if he succeeds in bringing in a ban. A link to it is in the description below. Thanks to Richard Walton for sending it in. A Welsh farmer has received death threats after questioning a cafe for using vegan milk. 
Gareth Wynne-Jones shared a picture of the drinks menu at a North Wales cafe on his Facebook page. He questioned why the cafe is using plant-based fluids instead of milk. Badly spelled messages threatened to end Gareth's life, calling him an animal-killing scumbag and potential serial killer. The cafe also says it has received online abuse, including threats of violence and arson. Romanian antis are very pleased with themselves. They have a brown bear, a poaching incident and a member of a royal family, all in the same press release. Other anti-hunting and anti-royal politicians are weighing in to condemn Prince Emmanuel von Unzu Liechtenstein, who they accuse of shooting a male brown bear instead of a female he was licensed to shoot. They claim as Romania's largest brown bear and has, or had, a name, Arthur. Prince Emmanuel denies the claim. A plea to hunt with an American bison cull has had an overwhelming response. More than 45,000 people have applied to cull bison in the Grand Canyon after the US National Park Service requested volunteers to help them with overpopulation. There's no hunting in the Grand Canyon, so the usual tag system, where a certain number of tags are available and American hunters apply for them in a national lottery, doesn't work here. The NPS only needs 12 hunters. However, antis are furious that it's introduced a backdoor tag system for bison. Starving lions are attacking tourists in Namibia. The attacks on campers highlights the issue of human-wildlife conflict in the country. Hunters in Namibia have told Field Sports Britain how Western bans on hunting tourism affects the economy and the alternative photo tourism causes more harm than good. It's really amazing or the, what people really forget about over and above the money that, that one person versus a thousand bring in is the ecological footprint they leave behind. So, you know, imagine the amount of toilet paper that 55,000 people have to use versus 100. It's, uh, and that's where the crux lies. It, it, like I said, it's ultimately about habitat preservation. Last week's decision by South Africa on lions is having an effect on rhinos. South Africa wants to slaughter more than 8,000 lions, around a quarter of the world's population, because it doesn't like them being used for petting zoos, canned hunting or Chinese traditional medicine. Rhino owners fear that the government may say the same thing about their animals, which will lead to the slaughter of 60% of South Africa's rhino population, a spectacular own goal. Rhino farmers keep rhinos in the hope that South Africa will lift the ban on the export of rhino horn to the Far East. They point out that farming rhinos in order to remove horns prevents poaching of the wild stock. And finally, so China has no hunters or shooters. Think again. After three leopards escaped from a zoo in the south of the country, the Chinese government tried to find them with helicopters and drones. It then turned to the local hunting community in Huangzhou to ask for help. Dozens of hunters with dogs and guns turned out and have, so far, shot two of the missing cats. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Let's talk Chipolatas and Cumberlands now. And this week on Field Sports Extra, you have the chance of winning a Trespade Mini Plus Little Demon Rosso Sausage Stuffer with starter pack worth £168. According to the website, it makes sausage making a pure joy, which could be useful if the weather weren't so filthy today if you're planning a barbecue. Everyone needs one of these in their lives. To watch Field Sports Extra, become a member of the Field Sports Nation. To become a member of the Field Sports Nation, follow the link on the screen and get a shift on, as we've already given away just shy of £5,000 worth of prizes this year. Next, Sam Green shows how to dust them. So who... Who do we have here then, Mr Green? So this is Ellie, she's very new to clay shooting, um, just been shooting a little bit. You haven't shot a gun for about a year now. Oh, good. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, so we're just going to do a little bit of practice, just let Ellie have a go. She's never even shot a 12 bore, she's only used a 20 bore, so we're just going to have a few little shots. Um, we're only using whole X comp 21 gram, so they're nice and low recoil, they shouldn't kick her. Um, but yeah, we're, so we're just going to have a shot and just see how she gets on. Okay. Now, we're going to start with a rabbit, okay? Is that a good one to start on or is that a terrible one to start on? Probably the worst target to start on, <laughs> <laughs> but we're just going to have a go. 
Yeah, so anyway, we're gonna have a look at the rabbit. Let's shoot one target and we'll see how far you're out or you're not. Okay, so just our head for my kill for Yeah, you go for you go for it where you think and let's go with it there. Okay, cool. Sorry. It's fine. Let's do one more time. Excellent. Am I too far ahead? Yeah, so you're miles in head, okay. So what we're gonna do now, you're not you're shooting it in the right play, that's that's fine. Your body's set up in line with that. You're coming back fine, okay, but we're gonna let the rabbit come up, okay, let it come up to your gun before you actually start moving. Okay. All right. So, so I'm still where, up there. yeah. So if you're going to shoot the target here and you're coming back to here, yeah. you say pull. All right. Okay. We're going to let the clay come up and basically nearly hit the barrel before okay. you actually start moving. Okay. Yeah. If you say pull before, okay, and the clay comes up and you start moving, you've got this massive gap between the get barrel and and the clay, and you're going to miss the target in front. Okay. Okay. That target doesn't want any lead as such, but it's your you're relying more on the gun speed, okay? Just okay. match the speed of the target. And pretend you're gonna shoot the very front edge of that target, okay. okay? We're just gonna let it come up to the gun and shoot the front edge. Okay. Now don't move off that hole point where you're holding until the clay comes up and nearly touches the barrel. Okay. Pull. Am I shooting it too quick? No, you're okay. fine. One more. Remember not to move until that comes up and we're just going to shoot the front edge of the target. Cool. Oh, I let it get ahead of me. Okay, now just take a second longer to shoot it. Okay. All right, because we're shooting it right on the edge of the, of the mat. Okay, yeah. now we're going to shoot it. So, Paul, we're going to shoot it there. Okay, okay so shall I face here? So, yes, yeah, it. So, turn okay. your feet, set yourself up to shoot it there. Yeah. Come back 50%. Okay, and it will just give you more time to see the rabbit and okay. actually let that shot happen. Okay. Oh. Do you know what happened? I, well, I think I rushed it and then I've, left, I've got in ahead of it. As soon as you said pull, you started to move. Too early. And there was, yeah, and then you've got this big gap. You were miles in front for a start and you probably missed it six foot in front because you yeah. already started. As soon as you said pull, you started moving. Yeah. Well, you're way in front of the target for a start. The only thing you can do then is either stop the gun, yeah. let the clay catch up and restart okay. again. Okay. But it's very hard to do. You're not going to. So that's why we was whole point. Okay, don't listen to that trap. Okay, move on sight. Let the clay come up and then move by that. Don't move when you hear the clay trap actually go off. Okay. All right. Yeah. Try again. Yeah. Stop, let it come to you, shoot the front edge. Perfect. Happy? Yeah, no, you're right. I, I start to overthink it. You're yeah. Right. Thank you, though. No worries. <laughs> do, you keep, uh, do you keep your eyes open, Ellie, or do you close I'm, one? Do you... I'm terrible. I'm sure it's probably wrong, but I, I do shut this one, so I only have my eye along the barrel, um, okay. which I'm sure is probably wrong. I, I know you hear people say keep your eyes open, but... <laughs> That's just what I should tend to do. Anyhow, okay. But, yeah. Would you try and move Ellie to opening both eyes? Do you think over time, if you were no, her? we had this debate. Uh, me and Phil had this debate the other day. Um, I shoot with both eyes open for everything, um, so it's easy for me to say keep both eyes open. Just do that. But we all see things so differently, and some people have got a stronger master eye, or the it, it's so varied. Um, it's whatever works for you. I know people that sort of low income in stuff or a crow, yes, they have to shut an eye and basically rifle that target, but then they'll get a crosser where they can keep both eyes open. It's finding whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong really in it. So this debate then you were having, Phil, so what's the, uh, what was your side of the story? Well, it's cross-eyed anyway. <laughs> <laughs> As Sam said, every eye is different. Um, me personally, I shoot right-handed. However, I am, my left eye is my master eye and it's stronger than my right um, so for me I have to let my right eye take over and by doing that I have to, to get to how to get that to, to, to perform like that is to squint my left eye it's the only way I get to see the picture that I yeah, need see, to that's how you, that's how, <laughs> so what do you do I, I literally had to just squint just probably a quarter <laughs> of, the, of the eye shut to take to take the right eye no wonder into you master. Wear glasses. pardon no wonder you wear glasses when you <laughs> I should wear a patch like a pirate 
Um, yeah, so for, for me, that's the only way that I can see the picture that I need to. Uh, if I keep both eyes open, I look down, uh, I just see the side of the barrel with my, my left okay. eye. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Next, there are rumblings in the English Parliament this week about banning trophy imports and about animal sentience. Ben finds out what this could mean for shooting and hunting sports. Close the door. It's black one. Open the door. The doors are opening on a new government legislative term. There are going to be new laws in England that may affect hunting and shooting, and we get them spelled out to us by none other than Her Majesty the Queen. Legislation will set binding environmental targets. Legislation will also be brought forward to ensure the United Kingdom has and promotes the highest standards of animal welfare. That's what Boris and Carrie plan for us wildlife managers, but what does it mean? At the weekend, two newspapers floated two possibilities. That animals with backbones will be classed as sentient, bad luck you octopuses, and that Zach Goldsmith's trophy hunting import ban will not apply to hunts which are good for conservation, which is most hunts. So first of all, are we going to get bills on both of those subjects? I ask Neil Parrish MP, who is Chairman of the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Committee and, more importantly, Farms and Shoots. The answer is yes, there'll be a sort of kept animals bill and the animals abroad bill. So, you know, one will be very much about farmed animals, the other one will be very much about sort of trophy hunting and the like. So those two bills are coming through and I think um, they will, you know, I shall watch them closely. I think they need to be practical. They need to have common sense. We need to promote good animal welfare, but we've got to be careful we don't stray um, into animal rights. That's something that I've always been very, you know, certain of. <clears throat> the minister in charge of the sentience bill is already in a muddle. In an interview with BBC Radio 4's Today programme, George Eustace said this. This would be um, you know, much more applicable uh, when it comes to uh, the field of uh, kept animals, uh, farm animals, for instance, pets, um, animal legislation of, of that sort rather mm -hmm. than environmental legislation. Saying that sentience doesn't apply to wildlife is like saying that human rights don't apply to the unemployed. I put this to Neil Parrish. The sentience seems to me to be a minefield um, when you have words like consciousness and empathy and self-awareness, which uh, you know might do or might be a little bit different. Is isn't this a isn't this dangerous? Isn't this like um, legislating on love or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got I've got mixed views. I always have over the sentience bill. Um, I think the government would have been much wiser to have to have um, just incorporated the European law because it was written in a way where it could be slightly ambiguous. I would accept, but it um, it was practical in some ways. Whereas if we're not careful, we will make the sentience bill. Um, a, a problem. Now, I understand from questions put to Zach Goldsmith or his advisors on Monday, I was on a meeting with him, um, that the, the hunting uh, bill and the hunting act won't be involved directly in the sentience bill. So in some respects, that may help. So what will be in Eustace's House of Lords counterpart Zach Goldsmith's separate bill on importing trophies? Because if there is, as the time suggests, a clause which allows you to import animal parts if you can prove conservation, then we're home and dry. Hunting is conservation. And if, like many of us, you display your conservation credentials by hanging them on your wall, then not only no harm done, good done. I ask Neil if Zach Goldsmith will allow this. I believe he will, um, but we have to, I mean, I think you probably ought to ask Zach that direct question uh, because I can't answer for, for the minister. And like, so what I will promise you is sort of chair of the, uh, the select committee, uh, EFRA, we will watch this legislation very, very carefully and, and make sure that it's practical at the end of the day and that we do have, you know, we are 
shooting, conservation, um, management of the countryside, management of wildlife um, is all still practical and can be maintained. And I think, you know, that's that's the challenge to balance good animal welfare uh, with good management of, of the conservation and countryside. Zach Goldsmith has turned down multiple requests for an interview with us, even when we asked friends of his to put in a good word. Back in the BBC studio and the reporter is trying to pick holes in Eustace's arguments about animal sentience. Will this help you to maintain environmental standards? You'll know there are deep concerns amongst many people that the Australians follow the same sort of practices they have in the United States, chlorine-washed chicken, hormone-fed cattle. Will you agree to allow that into the country? The trouble is, if you have a politician who is out of his depth with a word like sentience, and a reporter from the state-funded media who thinks that dead chickens might have a sentience issue, you haven't got a hope of getting a sensible law. You wonder what the Queen really thinks. I'm so sorry, Mama. You'll have to put up with these idiots for the next 20 minutes. They're just bloody stupid. That's what they are. Thank you, Ben. Now from Westminster to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Holton Media in the Netherlands puts out his first goose shooting video of the year. Two friends are out shooting and watch for the German wirehead pointer's good retrieve of a diving Canada goose. Thanks to Andrew Gibbons for sending in this from the Desert Dog Outdoors channel. It explores ethical hunting, explains trophy hunting, plus, as Andrew says, there's great rock art and a stone hide. Tim Roche's latest is up and out. He is in Shropshire, keeping on top of feral pigeons with his air arms S410. In South Africa, Matt Darba is off after Rock Hyraxes or Dassies. He is out on a wine farm armed with FX PCPs. And congratulations too to Matt for getting married this month. Nicole, you are a brave woman. Also air gunning, Edgun Leshy uses what he calls tracer rounds, that's bright orange pellets to you and me, to record his backyard squirrel hunt. One of the big US hunting seasons is underway and YouTube lets you know it. Here are Warb and Hayden from the Hunting Public Channel finding turkeys on public land in Kentucky. In Europe, it's all about roebuck at this time of year. Here is Wild Serbia's latest, a good quality hunt and a good shot in open ground. And finally, New Zealand stags are still a popular subject this week on YouTube. Clayton from Ohinerata Hunting Life hosts father and son Barry and another Hayden, and Hayden shoots a good 11-pointer. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us down on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, it's out at 7pm UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Goodbye.